Bible study on tonight. It's going to be said and done to encourage us and to inspire our hearts. All right, let church stand. Amen. Let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, you. your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the peace that you give to each and every one of us. We ask you, Lord, that you bless, bless us right now in the name of Jesus. Bless each and every request that's been made known and any unspoken request. We pray, Lord, that you Know what we need. We ask the Holy Spirit to make intercession for us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would bless uh, men and women and children everywhere. That you would save and add to the church daily. Such as should be saved. Remember our families. Remember our relationships. Husband and wives and children. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 I want you to go with me tonight. Uh, over to the book of uh, Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Amen. Amen. The book of Ephesians. And uh, I want to say this that the, uh, I guess the very reason, the very reason. <coughs> Why we don't see uh, the extended power? Praise the Lord! And why we don't see the expanded, ex expanded power in the church uh, like they did in the early church you know, when the church first started? You know, saw a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders, and things such as that. I'm not saying that those things aren't occurring now, uh, but uh, they certainly are not occurring like they were in the beginning. And uh, one of those reasons, I'm sure there's very reasons for that, but uh, one of those reasons is that people don't have, or the saints of God, um, don't have the doctrinal truth concerning Christ and what Christ uh, has done and what the mission and the relationship that we should have and the power that 
that should be displayed in the church. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, a lot of people don't focus on doctrine, uh, the truth. When I say the truth, I'm talking about the, the very foundation, the very core of the church. And what's the purpose of calling and the mission and the vision of, of the church? You know, um, how can I say it? Uh, back then, I'm, I'm talking about, when I say back then, I'm talking about when the church first started. You know, they were fresh coming off of Christ. And they knew exactly what Christ wanted them to do, and they carried that out. But you know how it is as time go on, uh, that, 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 uh, I don't want to say the freshness, but the, the, the information gets a little watered down. The information gets a little bit distorted. You follow what I'm saying? It's like if I tell this brother, uh, 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 Bishop Quinn don't like water. I said, pass it down. By the time it get to him, they say probably Bishop Quinn uh, 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 want to feed him. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, because that's what happens. When people pass down information, you know, it gets, it gets a little distorted. Amen? And thank God that we got the scriptures to go by. But you know, if, if you're not led by the Spirit, you know, you can even mess that up. Amen? Depending on uh, my own agenda. But I want to be, you know, manipulating the scriptures to manipulate the saints. Amen? People do that. What is that first be to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints? Yes. Uh, it means to, to, to uh, you faith that we have in Christ, you know, because we got adversaries that want to destroy us and take us off track. So you have to contend, you know, uh, fight, you know, to keep your mind and your spirit and your body right. You know, and not, and not give in to seducing spirits as doctrines of death or things yeah. such as that. You know, things that you want to do. You got to focus on what God wants us to do. So, um, in the book of Ephesians, then, uh, we want to, to focus in on uh, tonight our calling. Amen. Our calling. Why am I here? Why did he say that? And, and what, that, what that calling means. Amen? Y'all with me? All right. Amen. All right. Um, Ephesians. I'm still laughing at the other All right. Ephesians. Uh, Chapter number one and uh, verse number one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, yes. to the saints which are at Ephesus, mm -hmm. and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So this epistle uh, was written by. The beloved Apostle Paul. And those, 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 that first verse there, it talks about his calling. His calling. And he says that his calling is to be a, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Notice by the will of God. By the will of God. An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And um, I want to say that God's calling for your life, I wrote it down here, God's calling for your life is more meaningful. It's more meaningful than anything that a 
person can have or ever receive. Yeah. Amen? It's more meaningful. Why? Because, because one reason is, is your calling, uh, when you accept your calling that God has for you, it really dictates your life. Yeah. It dictates your life. How you lead. Amen? And, and it dictates your, your blessings. You know, it opens the door. When you, when you accept your calling and walk in your calling, it opens the door for, your, for blessings. Amen? And it opens the door for you to receive everything that God has for you. Amen? When you reject your calling, amen, it, it really closes doors. Because you're not walking in the purpose and the meaning for which God has called you for. Amen? We got to remember that God, God has really started this thing. He has already predestinated it right. before the foundation of the world. So this isn't just uh, uh, something that, that God is making up along the way. Amen? It's something that he has already worked out. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and, and your life has already been worked out in Christ. Amen? Uh, no alterations. It's already been worked out. And when we, when we accept our calling, when we accept our calling and, and, and magnify our calling and appreciative of our calling, Amen? The scripture says, make your calling and election what? Sure. When we do that and embrace it and walk in it in every aspect of life, it opens up the blessings of God for us. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and the, Lord, the, Lord, the Lord is really uh, maturing my mind in this respect. And I want to I pass this on to you. That that. In every aspect of life, you know, God wants us to be whole. Am I right? Amen. And and he, he opened up my mind. He was he was saying, like, if you go to the movies, just be whole. If you go into uh, bowling, right. uh, be whole. Amen. Uh, if you're going out to dinner, be whole. Yes. Amen. Whatever you, you go to the beach, uh, be whole. Yes. Amen. You go to water meet. Uh, you go all the way, I'm naming them places where people say, oh, you shouldn't go. Uh, you know, holy people there. But if you go there and be holy, you there. Uh, be holy. And then live according to the scriptures everywhere you go. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that a mind revelation? <laughs> Just everywhere you go, uh, be holy. Live according to the scriptures. Amen? Uh, it's not rocket science. Amen. Just live it. And God wants you to live it before people. Yeah. Amen. Uh, amen? Live this thing. Amen? My sister? If you don't live it, you're not truly representing Christ. No, not a true representative. Live it. Uh, ambassador, live it. Amen? So, so, so then, everywhere I go, I don't drop my call. I take that with me. Amen. 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 I take that with me. Do uh, as far as you know. I, I like to preach. He called me to preach, right? That don't mean I, everywhere I go, I preach. But everywhere I go, I represent a preacher. Amen. Uh, I represent. Yes. Amen. Holiness. Yes. I represent God. Now, now you know, I may not even know that I am a preacher, but but if they're around me long enough, they they can sense the calling. Yes. Yes. Amen. Follow me? The saint of God. Amen. Alright. So, so read that verse again. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, uh -huh. to the saints which are in Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Alright, now, we are we are literally called, the Lord dropping this in my mind. He said, We're called to be saints. Amen. We're called to be servants. Amen? And we're also called to be holy, and we're also called to be friends. Uh, 
friend of Jesus. Amen. That's, that's a part of our calling. It's relationship. Amen. Now, now, when I'm called to be a, a, a saint, that means that, that I'm, I'm set apart. Amen. I, 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 I exclusively uh, use my body, my mind, my thoughts for him. Amen. What would a Christ? We are not our own. Amen. Amen. Sanctified, set apart. Amen. Called out the ecclesia. Called out for the world. Set apart. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then I'm called to be a servant. Amen. To serve the Lord and to serve his people. Amen. You are called to serve the Lord and to serve his people. Amen. Um, uh, uh, if you look at the, the Ten Commandments, those first four commandments relate to your servanthood to God. The last six commandments relate to your servanthood to one another. Amen? Uh, now, do we need to go over the Ten Commandments or y'all got it? Uh, all right, thank you. And then, then Jesus said, Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you. Uh, that you should what? Love one another. Uh, as I have what? Loved you. Amen? Thank you. That's part of your servanthood. Uh, now, now if, if I'm not loving uh, God and I'm not loving you, I'm missing my servanthood. Yes. Amen? I'm missing that call. Am I right? Then, then Jesus said, we might as well go over there. Uh, that's in uh, uh, John chapter 15. Let's look at that. John chapter 15. And let's go to verse 15. Woo, Jesus. Thank God for all our pastors that are here on today. Uh, St. John chapter 15. Henceforth, I call What verse is it? 15. 15, 15. All right, yep. Hold on for a minute. Go, go again. Go, start with 13. Yeah, then we put 14 is the thought. But let's go with 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now notice, notice your calling here in verse 14. Read. For ye are, ye are my friends. Now you, my friend, that's part of your calling. Read. If you do whatsoever, I command you. And it's contention. Uh, if you do whatever, I command you, you're my friend. Amen? Uh, and he said something else uh, in another verse of scripture. Uh, who are my friends? Do you know? Uh, who are you? know, he said, who is my brother? My sister. You know, he didn't do it the will of my father. But okay, read. Henceforth I call you not servants, uh -huh. for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. See, that's even a deeper relationship. Read. But I have called you friends. My, my, my. I am a friend of God, for he called me friend. <laughs> Read. For all things that I have heard of, my Father, I have made known unto you. Now, 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 we're talking about your calling now. Let's look at verse 16. What does it say? Ye have not chosen me. Now notice, we have not chosen him. Read. But I have chosen you. He has chosen us. He has a calling on our life. He called you. He chose you. He picked you out. Amen. Read it. And ordained you. Now, now, now you have, that's that sanctification. You, you've got an ordination. Even if the pastor ain't laid hands on you. Huh? When you accepted Christ, you received an ordination. Uh, you've been, that ordination means you've been set apart. Amen. You've been set apart. We're talking about your call. Amen. Uh, but you've been set apart for Christ, for his use. Amen? Read. That you should go and bring forth fruit. Now notice, there it is. He has a mission for you. Uh, that you should go and be productive. 
Amen. Bring forth fruit. Uh, be productive. Save souls. Uh, be, father, be a witness. Uh, be productive. Bring forth fruit. Your lifestyle should be fruitful. Amen. Amen. Not barren. You should be fruitful. Yes. Amen. That you should go bring forth fruit. Read. And that your fruit should remain. And that your fruit should remain. It won't be dried up. It won't get rotten. It won't spoil. Amen. How does my fruit spoil? When I, when I start trying to live what I want to live. All right, let's break it down this way. How does, my, how does fruit, a, a, a flower or a plant, uh, stop living when it stops getting water? Amen. When it stops being connected to the source. Yes. Amen. Uh, when we, we dry up, when we stop being connected to the source, we we be unfruitful when we when we stop being connected to the vine. Yes. Amen. Amen. You always gotta stay connected. And the only way to stay connected is to continue to focus on his will, doing what he has called you to do. Amen. 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 Um, if, if we were to if we were to focus just on doing the will of God, life would be so much better. Yes. Amen. We would be so much happier. Uh, if, I, if I just let go of uh, a drop by that uh, and follow him uh, and him exclusively, uh, my life would be better. Our lives would be better. Sound like rocket science, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, no, it's simple. But, but we struggle uh, in our own mind. Uh, we struggle with our own desires. Uh, but I got to drop my that. Uh, pick up my cross uh, and do what? Follow him. If I did that, if we did that, life would be better. Amen? Life would be easier in, in the sense of uh, struggles. Amen? Now the enemy's going to fight you, but that's all right. Uh, because, because when you know him, life is better. My brother, he kind of oh, I'm getting more done now. Go ahead. Totally. Totally committed to the, his will. Totally. Not our will, but his will. Because a lot of times we say we want more spiritual blessings from God. But if you don't focus on God, right. you won't get those spiritual blessings. You won't get those uh, uh, visions and dreams and, and those things because you have to be in tune with God. Yeah. In order to get godly things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Amen? All right, finish reading that scripture. What's that? You have not chosen me, uh -huh. but I have chosen you. Yes. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That it should remain. What verse is it? 16. All right, read. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, yes. he may give it you. Amen. All right, now just go over here to, to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 26. Committed to the call. Acts 26, and uh, drop down to verse 16. But rise. Oh, hold on. Go to 414. And when, and when we were all fallen to the earth, there, yeah. I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Alright, now this is this is this is Christ uh, giving Paul his calling. Amen. So he started out asking, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou? Read. We in Acts chapter 26, verse 14. Right? All right, read. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Uh-huh. Now, he's saying that it's hard for you to go against your calling. 
Amen. Paul, he thought he knew what God had called him to do. Did it. Uh, went after it wholeheartedly. Did it. Uh, but he was wreaking havoc. Uh, see, that? See, it's, it's a bad thing to go on supposition. <laughs> what you suppose is right. Uh, and you know, a lot of people died uh, uh, by going on what they supposed was right. That one individual tried to hold up that ark. Uh, he supposed that that was the right thing. And he died. Amen. So, so you don't want to go on what you suppose. Amen. I agree. It's hard for thee to kick against the prick. And I said, who are thou? Uh-huh. Lord. Yeah. And he said, I am Jesus. I'm Jesus. Who thou persecuted. Amen. Read. But rise and stand upon thy feet. What verse is? 16. All right. This is where we came in. Notice what he said. Arise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Now the Lord has called you for uh, this purpose. Amen. This is why you have a calling on your life. Read. To make thee a minister. Now he wants to make you a servant. Minister. Amen. Read. And a witness both of these things which thou hast seen. Uh huh. And of those things in thee in the which I will appear unto thee. My mind. Read. Delivering thee from the people. Uh -huh. now, now doesn't he do this for us? He delivers us from the people. He, that's sanctification. Yeah. Amen. Setting us apart. Amen. Read. And from the Gentiles. And from the Gentiles. Read. Unto whom now I send thee. Now notice. He sanctifies you for you not to stay apart by yourself. Me, myself, and I. But he sends you back. Uh, to those whom he cleansed you from. Uh, so that you can be a light. So that you can be a witness. Yes. Amen. That's part of your calling. Amen. Am I right? Now, you know, it's not about, that's why I said, you can go to the beach, but be holy. Right. You go to the movie, but be holy. Amen. Uh, I ain't say go to the bar. <laughs> but if you do, have to go there. Uh, now, you know, be holy. Uh, I ain't telling you to go there. Go. You follow me? But y'all get the principle of what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. Because he didn't call you to hide. He called you to be a light. To be a witness. Amen. And, and we have to mature and grow up. Uh, and walk out our call. Uh, 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 he has given you power. He has given you authority. Uh, use your power and authority. Uh, walk in confidence. Uh, and boldness. Uh, be sure of what you got. Amen. Be sure that he gave it to you. He knows. Amen. My brother. Because people always watch. Oh yeah, absolutely. They always watch. Absolutely. They watch every move you make. Absolutely. You're doing, you know, because uh, that's the enemy. Yep. The enemy wants to bring you. He wants to accuse you. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have yeah. to be holy and strong. All time. Amen. We should desire that. The reason why I'm saying, I'm saying it this way, and I want y'all to catch me the way I'm saying it, yeah. is that because that's my calling. That's your calling. Amen. And I, we should esteem that calling. Now, it's not a chore to be holy. It's not a chore to be a servant. Uh, it's not a chore to be a friend. Uh, you follow me? I should be, I should be excited about that. Yeah. We should be excited about that. Yeah. Uh, because this is what God has given us to do. And we should be excited and embrace it with all of our heart, with all of our mind, our spirit, and our soul. Why? Because I know that this unlocks the door to my happiness, yeah. to my peace, yeah. to all of my blessings. Yeah. Uh, I will be all of my joy. Even if I'm walking in my calling, they persecute me, I still got joy. Yeah. Uh, I still got peace. Yeah. Amen. I still got hope. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, because I know that 
if it happened, it's the will of God in, uh, uh, concerning me in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. 
And tell me what he said. He said, we give that stuff up. How we think about it. But we, we got to think about it the way God wants us to think about it. Right. Amen? Uh, like, like Paul, they were talking about offering stuff up to I. And I, he said, the I is nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> he went off on it. It's nothing. Huh? That, it doesn't mean anything. Huh? It's nothing. <laughs> see, you see what I'm saying? We got to look at stuff like that. Amen. Amen.
And we're talking about, we're talking about literally surrendering completely. Amen. Why, why don't we surrender completely? Holding on to stuff. stuff. Holding on to, to stuff that doesn't matter. Uh, what did you say, Phil? Won't let go. Why not? Pride. Ooh. Fear. Fear. Pride. Abandonment. Lost. Think I'm gonna lose hours. Not no no trust. Lack of faith. Oh uh, yeah, look at look at that. Yeah. People, I, you know, there's a there's a there's a fear, like uh, Deacon said. People feel like they won't be as happy. Yeah. Because they are giving up things. See, see. So I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna be as happy as I am now doing what I like. Yeah. And that's that's that comes. Did you hear what he said? A fear of thinking I'm not gonna be as happy. That's a lack of knowledge. Amen. That, that, that says that you don't know the doctrine. You don't know the truth. Grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, my brother? Uh-huh. What do you mean? Sometimes I know that camera bothers me because I, I want to talk to the saints. But uh, uh, it ain't, uh, even for uh, preachers, I'm just saying, I say this. The Lord helps me, he helps me say stuff. Uh, for preachers, like being on the pulpit, right? And I'm all staunch and stern, you know? And uh, uh, somebody, uh, the anointing is going through, but I'm like, oh, hold myself. Somebody say something funny. Oh, I'm not gonna laugh. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit there. No. A uh, good word going by preaching, yeah. and you just oh, no, come on. That's the Holy Ghost. That's you. Yeah. That always bothers me. Because the Holy Ghost wanna have you yeah. praise. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't saying you gotta be all crazy with it. You know, sometimes I get crazy. Me know. too. <laughs> I see you got to be all like that. You know, but, but show some of you. Don't be stoic. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the thing. And, and, um, I forgot my original question. What was my original question? You said you didn't like the preachers. No, no, the question. You remember the question? And then you start about people's uh, attitude they have towards holiness. Yeah. And how it doesn't attract people, it repels people. Right. He was talking about mis misrepresenting God. Yeah. And not showing the joy. The joy. Why don't we do exactly? Why don't we do exactly? The question was something like, why don't we do what God wants us to do? Right. Yeah, day. 
what stops them. Amen. And, and, and uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Tina. I bring that back to mind. I'm getting older now. I'll be 61. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the question. What stops us from selling out? Huh? And you know, because he wants us to sell out. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say it this way. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The only way to truly be happy in Christ is you do sell out. If you have one foot in, one foot out, you ain't going to be happy. Huh? You got to totally sell out to this thing. Because you're trying to live all your lives. And if you got a public life, you got a personal life, you got a professional life, and, and you, you still, you, you're trying to live all those lives and try to, we have holiness up so high sometimes. Mm -hmm. so you can't even, they can't even reach it themselves. My Lord. And that makes them miserable. And they see you, and you have people like you having enjoying life and having fun, and they look at you like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but, right, right. <laughs> but, but they have holding this up so high, and some people are still living in the past. Yeah. They're living on Bishop Radcliffe's teaching. Wow. And he said, walk in the light as you see the light. Yeah. So we get the light gets brighter, you know. Brighter and brighter. Yes. But all of those that still want that same light. Your lamp gonna just shine the same. every weight uh, and the sin that does so easily this section, looking unto Jesus. Now, we're talking about the, the selling out. You know, and if you're going to really walk in your calling, you have to really sell out. Amen. Let's look at what Paul said. Philippians uh, chapter number 3. Uh, verse, let's go and start at verse 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, uh -huh. touching the righteous which is in the law, blameless. Uh -huh. But what things... Oh, go, go, go up a little bit, Jesus. Uh -huh. Yeah, wherever that thought would be. Five, four, four. Four, okay, good, thank you. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, uh -huh. if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might... Trust in the flesh, I know. Now, is that, could that be a reason why we don't sell out? We're trusting more in our flesh uh, than in God. Uh, because when you trust God, you got to walk by faith. You don't see it, but you got to believe it. Uh, but when you, when you walk by your flesh, you, 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 you feel like you are in control. Uh, and I said, feel like. Uh, because God is always more in control than you are. Uh, 
And if, and if I want to remain in control, then I'm missing out on the will of God. The blessings of God. Amen? If I, I, got, I got $20, God said, get that $20. So I'm like, God, I'm like, I got to get this, I got to get that. I'm going to give you five. <laughs> huh? so, so God said, well, I was going to give you $20,000. Now I'm going to give you $10. Because you want to be in control. Control your depression, but also in your emotions too. Right. All the control. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, as I like what my brother just said because it's kind of bad. We got to let go and let God. Amen. God takes us to new uh, 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 arenas. Yes. New avenues. New levels. You should be, you should be growing, yeah. uh, experiencing more. My brother? Uh-huh. And you need to go somewhere else. Maybe you'll accomplish something. Yeah. You get back on the road. You want to learn where you're growing. Yeah. And you know, when that's where you're growing, when you finish where you're doing your work, the destination you want to be at. Mmm. And that's where that destination you're on now is what it's taking you where you got to be at later on. Yeah, absolutely. You don't get on that destination, you won't arrive. Uh, I was gonna say that uh, I'm thinking about that parable of the man that worked for a penny. It's early in yeah. the morning. You know, uh, we had one that came out early in the morning working and working and working and working. Mm -hmm. You can't do this, you can't go here, you can't do this and all that. Now these people come along at, 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 at the last minute and they ain't got to do all that stuff. And we the ones that we had to do all the stuff so you. <laughs> you know, and, and, and we hold up the projects. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to hold up the projects. We hold up the projects. Some kind of adjustment gets brighter and brighter. Until a perfect day. Until a perfect day. Yeah. If, if, if you stay on the path, right, just righteous, if you stay on the path, You'll grow. Uh, your, your, your intellect will grow. You'll get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen. Amen. And, and you'll understand more. You'll be more enlightened. Amen. When you come to Jesus, the first thing that you should receive from him is some more enlightenment. You should, you should look back. Uh, uh, when you come to Jesus, the very foundation. Uh, when you come to him, uh, you should automatically see, man, I was done doing the stuff I was doing before. That's the first thing you should be able to see. You understand? Uh, uh, man, man I, I, I'm so glad I came to Jesus. Uh, that's what you should have in your mind. Uh, and that stuff that I was doing back then, that was dumb. Uh, enlightenment. Yes, sir. Uh, Follow me? And it should get brighter and brighter uh, as you live life. Amen. You should be more open, get more wisdom and knowledge. And that comes through, see y'all pushing my Bible study. That that comes through uh, you getting a greater relationship with Christ. Uh, I'm gonna say it this way: that that I should, I should. Be in love. You should be in love with the thought of getting more uh, into a stronger relationship with Christ. Yeah. Getting to know him better. Uh, in fact, I should be excited that he invites me to come. He said, come unto me. Uh, all ye that labor and are heavy labor. Uh, he noticed me. He said, I'll give you rest. Then he said, take Notice the invitation. Learn of me. Huh? I should be excited. Boy, I can learn about huh? And he says, look, my yoke is easy. Huh? My yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Oh, When it gets hard, it didn't come from God. It didn't come from God. 
not, not, let me, <laughs> let, let me, let me uh, connect what he's saying, right? Uh, we talked about, you said that we got to uh, know what God is saying, mm -hmm. right? Now, how do you know uh, what God is saying? Mm -hmm. You got you to gotta search the scripture. Mm -hmm. Now, I know this, this is what I'm trying to say. Confirm the scripture. Mm -hmm. Just don't go off of one scripture. Look for that thought within the scripture. Line on line. Right. Precept on precept. Yeah. Then that confirms what you should do or what you should know. Amen. 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 People feel like if they go outside of that, then they're going off course. If you go outside of, 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 of the word of God, well, you know, you know, you're going off course. You're going off course, but yet God is trying to reveal something. Oh, I see what you're saying. To us. Because God is oh, I'm thinking people. I'm going off course, mm -hmm. but God is trying to show me something. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, I see. I got you. Yes. Uh, okay. Because he's a progressive God. Yes. You know, God just don't stand still. He, he's always moving. Always. And, and, and always. He wants us to always Amen. Be, you know, always be Amen. 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 That's how you grow. Amen. Amen. That's how you grow. That's how you mature. Yeah. Amen. You gotta let God, God grow your mind. Yeah. Uh, grow you, mature you. And you, you have that through different experiences with God. Amen? Yes, Lord. Uh, we have to love ourselves before we can love anybody else. Amen. And the reason I say that is because in order to love yourself, you cannot hate the experiences that made you. True. <laughs> True. Uh -huh. True. You can't hate those experiences yep. that made you who you are today. Yep. To a point where you can't embrace it and learn from it. Right. Amen. Thank you. Uh, All right. Where we at? Where we at? Elder? When you told me about Philippians chapter 3. Yes. And what verse? Uh, we said uh, verse 4, I think. What did you say, Phil? Yeah, 4. Four. Okay. Four. 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 Okay, you know, four. Four is for the thought to you. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, uh -huh. if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I go. Uh -huh. So let's let's not have confidence in our flesh. Amen. Amen. I agree. Circumcised the eighth day. Yes. Of the stock of Israel. Yes. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Yes. And Hebrew of the Hebrews. Uh -huh. As touching the law, uh -huh. a Pharisee. Pharisee. Concerning zeal, uh -huh. persecuting the church, mm -hmm. touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Uh -huh. yeah. But what things were gained to me, yeah. those I counted loss for Christ. Now Paul was prominent uh, in, in his day. Yeah. Amen. He had status yes. in his day. He had matters to legally go out and persecute and kill the saints. Amen. Uh, he was the big leader. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, although he was on the wrong side, he 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 was uh, a, a leader among them. Amen. Uh, and he thought <laughs> uh, he thought he was doing the right thing. Amen. But he was misguided. Amen. But the point is that I'm trying to make here is that whatever he was in, he was all in. Amen. Yeah, just think about yourself. When you was out there sinning, now I used that in the past tense. When you was out there, you was all in. All in. You doing it. And you thought you could do it. Now, no, what caused him to lose the, the, his grip of 
the world is not huh, of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? He counted it a privilege and an honor to get to know Jesus. Uh, we've got to count it as a privilege and an honor yeah. to get to know Jesus. Yeah. Oh, i got to read my Bible again. Oh, i got to go hear another sermon. Oh, i got to go pray. Uh, we, 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 we look at those things as chores, but they, they should be looked at as privileges. Yeah. I've got access yeah. uh, to the throne of grace. Yeah. I can come boldly. I can ask what I will Amen. and it shall be. I can tell all my troubles to Jesus. Yeah. Uh, he ain't going to tell nobody yeah. and he's going to help me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you yeah. uh, that's how we should look at it. Not a chore. Oh, uh, I should look at it. I got to oh, worship him uh, as a privilege and an honor. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, read what he said. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I know, he, he gave up everything. Uh, we should be willing to give up everything. Amen? Everything, I'm going to say it like we say it. That's not like it. Right. And never right. 
the tracks. Yes. 
receive mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't need nothing outside. Because because the scripture says he has given unto us in him all things uh, that pertain unto life and godliness. Everything I need. Amen. It's in Jesus. Amen. It's in him. Huh? All the My God. My God. My God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help us. Can, can, you, can you finish me? I know we did it. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, uh -huh. but that which is through the faith of Christ. I know Righteousness this. which is of God by faith. All right. Read. That I may know him. I'm going to notice. He said, I want to know him. And the power of his resurrection. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable unto his death. Uh-huh. If by any means. If by any means. I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Uh -huh. You talk about soul now. Amen. That's sold out. Amen. Amen. Now, he said he's crazy. <laughs> uh, I gotta be crazy. Like this. <laughs> yeah. What you say? Yeah. Why not? Amen. How can you lose like that? Uh, uh, people who reserve for themselves are gonna be lost. Amen. Because that very thing you're trying to reserve is the very thing that's going to destroy you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just go all out. Amen. For him. Yes. He went all out for you. Did <laughs> yes. huh? and, and, and note it. Don't allow your mind to think it's not a privilege and an honor to get to know him. It's a privilege and an honor to get to know him. Amen. Y'all with me? All right. All right. Let's, uh, I got seven more minutes. Let's go. Let's, 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 let's uh, go to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. Amen. Read. As though God did beseech you 
by us. Now he begged you by us. Read it. We pray you in Christ's stead. What verse is it? 20. Uh, be ye reconciled to God. Uh, be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Uh -huh. Who knew no sin. Yeah. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. Wow, there it is again. In him. Amen. Now just read 21, then we got Yo, you ready for anyone? Thank you. Amen. What do we got? I got I got more, but I think we got it. My brother? Uh, I said like three times ago and stuff, so you were talking about the preacher. We should we get lost in the closet. Go ahead. Uh-huh. 